In this week's Airs and Spares, we'll be discussing why Prince William pulled out of his godfather's memorial at the last minute, citing personal issues, and why this has sounded alarm bells. And find out why former President Donald Trump is no fan of Prince Harry. This is Airs and Spares. Hello and welcome to Airs and Spares, the show where we bring you insight and opinion into the lives of two rather famous royal couples on either side of the Atlantic. I'm Kinsey Schofield and I'll be bringing you updates on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex here in California. And I'm Katie Nicholl and I'll have all the latest news from the Prince and Princess of Wales over here in the UK. All right, lots to discuss this week. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Donald Trump's strong comments on Prince Harry, as well as Meghan Markle's latest public outing. Yeah, I can't wait to hear about that, Kinsey. And I'm going to be discussing the latest on Prince William, who missed a memorial service for a personal matter. Well, of course, it's got tongues wagging, alarm bells ringing. What can it all mean? It's certainly unusual. Plus, we'll be debating all of the reaction to William's really important and quite deliberately timed speech on the Israel Hamas war last week. Oh, well, I already like your tone on that because I've seen some negative commentary there. So I can't wait to talk to you about that. Well, we'll definitely be digging into that in a little bit more detail, but let's start with what's happening in the UK because Kinsey, as we're recording this, um, we've been writing, I've been writing for Vanity Fair Live. Um, I know you've been reporting on it too. This, this really quite unusual announcement that came out of the palace. I mean, I sort of pinged into my inbox and um, these emails do seem to be quite frequent and increasingly alarming, um, certainly since the start of the year. It's not been a good start to the year. And we, we have just had Prince William now back at work, carrying out engagements. We saw him last weekend at the BAFTAs and we were expecting to see him today at St. George's in Windsor for the memorial of his godfather, the late King Constantine of Greece. When we got the news this morning that he had rather suddenly had to pull out. Now, that in itself isn't so unusual because people get sick, things happen, we know they've got young children, um, and I suppose there is always the possibility that something might happen, but this citation of personal reasons, um, I think is what struck everyone as quite unusual, particularly in the context of what we're dealing with at the moment, which is the Princess of Wales, recovering from what is clearly major abdominal surgery. She hasn't been seen um, for weeks now. Um, and of course, the king and his recent cancer diagnosis. So with those sort of big stories that have really rocked the monarchy, Prince William has been there alongside the queen, very much to step up and be the focus of royal life. And now here he is today, having unexpectedly pulled out of his godfather's um, memorial service, which was very well attended by other royals. The queen certainly wasn't there on her own. And I think, Kinsey, we should probably touch on some of those other royals who were there, some controversial ones amongst them, certainly <laughs> Prince Andrew leading the charge, which I think the optics look unusual. But what did you make of these personal reasons? And I don't, I, I wouldn't want to be more and start invading anyone's privacy here, but it, it is unusual, isn't it, to cite personal reasons? Right. And I, you know, like you, I had so many people in my inbox saying, what do you think's going on? I don't need commentary, but what do you think's going on? I am in this weird space where I feel like we've been privileged over the last few months to get as much detail as we have from the royal family, to find out the king is sick, to find out that the, the king had cancer, was going into surgery, even the princess of Wales. To me, we have been given an inch and you know, an inch more than we would have in the, in previous years or in the past. We've been led into the world a little bit deeper than we normally would have. You know, the king specifically has said, you know, I want to make people more aware of cancer. I want people to be more comfortable talking about it. I want people to go get tested for it. And that's why they've given us a, a few more details than they typically would. But to me, it's a privilege to have the kind of information they've given us over the last few months. And so, I don't want to guess. I don't want to sit around and try to figure out, to me, personal reasons. I That is a, a door it's shut in my face and I accept that answer and and I'll move on and, and hope that things are okay. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I, I think that that's a, uh, an acceptable answer. I, I, or do you do you agree with me? I, listen, I absolutely do. And I think you've got, um, you know, they are a, they are a family. Yes, William is a future king. Yes, he's, you know, he's got this incredibly 
incredible public profile. Um, but of course, he's he's a private person too. He's a father, he's a husband. Um, and, you know, one can only imagine this has not been an easy time for them as a family. And, and I've had a huge amount of sympathy for Prince William because not only is he probably desperately worried about his wife, he's having to look after those three young children. He's going to be very worried about his father. And I think he must be feeling that a huge sense of, of responsibility on his shoulders, probably now more than ever, you know, put aside the fact that one day he's going to be king. Um, you know, he's going to have all the worries that come with having a father who's in his mid 70s, a father who's got cancer, a wife who's not been well. So I think he's under enormous pressure. And I, I completely agree with you, whatever personal issues they are, they are personal. I mean, I suppose the risk with the palace in terms of them being more transparent with their narrative is it, it does make people naturally more inquisitive. So on one hand, it takes away that guessing game. Um, but in another, it sort of, I think, feeds the rumor mill. I think it was, it was important that when we got this guidance from the palace that he pulled out for personal reasons. That was caveated quite quickly afterwards with an assurance that the Princess of Wales is continuing with her recovery and she's doing well. Because I think that's everyone's immediate thought. Oh my goodness, is Kate okay? Agree, completely agree with you. And before we go on to the next story, I wanted to ask you, because you've been covering, you covered the young princes and you saw this evolution into this future king uh, that Prince William is. Um, do you feel at all when you talk about your sympathy towards Prince William, do you feel at all that that structure, that schedule that he created for himself, the freedom to spend more time with his family, the freedom to to focus on his kids, do you feel like that's been yanked away from him prematurely over the last few months because he has been thrust into supporting his father and taking more taking on more of a role for the Princess of Wales? Well, I mean, he certainly had to step up. You're, you're absolutely right, Kinsey. I mean, he, he has, a, along with the Queen Consort. Um, but I think in the same way that the Queen, the late Queen, gave William this sort of freedom pass, um, she always made it clear to him that, you know, she wanted him to have his his early years of marriage outside of the limelight. That's why he was able to live with Kate Middleton even for, for a period of time before they were married, you know, something that wouldn't have happened a generation before that, on the island of Anglesey in Wales, um, living a very quiet life. He was then encouraged to, to continue living that quiet life off the radar when they had Prince George. And if you remember, they didn't live in Kensington Palace first. They lived at Anmer Hall in Norfolk where they could sort of be away from the prying eyes of the paparazzi and the, and the media and really enjoy normality as a family. So I think he's been hugely grateful to his late grandmother for that. But I think he's also hugely grateful to his father um, for not sort of pushing too much on him too soon. And you'll remember the speculation about William potentially leapfrogging his father, um, which was which was rife for, for, for many, many years um, before Charles ascended the throne. And, you know, yes, I, I suppose people can understand why it was something that was being mooted, it was being talked about. Here you had a young Prince William, future Prince of Wales, who perhaps to, to everyone else might look better suited for the role of king when you're going to have, well, I don't know, certainly if his grandmother's anything to go by longevity in those Windsor genes. But, you know, that was never the plan. It was certainly never Charles's plan. Charles wanted to have his time on the throne as king. But not just that, he wanted his eldest son to be able to enjoy his tenure and his time as a Prince of Wales. And so I think there's been great um, understanding um, between father and son over that. But I, I certainly think that there is a huge amount of pressure on William at the moment, and he must be feeling that acutely. I mean, he's doing a huge amount. His diary is busy. He took a couple of weeks off while Kate went through that surgery so that he could be at home supporting his young family. But whatever procedure she's had, it's clearly been major. We're not expecting to see her until after Easter. Um, so I think that's, that's got to put a huge amount of pressure on him, coupled with the fact that his father's not well. And there is, of course, an expectation on him to step up to the plate. Now, I think that is something that we've been seeing carved between him and Queen Camilla. And of course, it was Queen Camilla who took centre stage today, sort of leading the charge of royals into St George's Chapel. But other controversial members of the family were there too, as you know. Well, Katie, that's a really good point. Talk to me about what that looks like to have not only Prince Andrew, but Fergie kind of leading everyone in, in you know, they looked like the leaders of the family today based on the facts that Queen Camilla traveled separately. Is, is, is 
that a poor reflection? I, are people going to respond negatively to this? Well, it, it, it's difficult to tell. I, I think when you consider the last time um, Prince Andrew was photographed as part of the family, it was back on Christmas Day at Sandringham, and of course, um, Sarah Ferguson was there too. So it almost feels like we've been prepped for this moment um, because I think otherwise it would have stood out and looked rather rather strange and the and you know the optics I don't think are great for the royal family when they're sort of out on parade as they are um on duty which yes this was a this was a private family memorial um but it but it but it was very much public in the sense that those pictures have gone round the world and of course we're not just sort of talking about the pictures of of Queen Camilla and Princess Anne you know the councillors of state who the king will be calling upon if he needs to you know, there's a councillor of state there in Prince Andrew, although he can't step up to that official role because the rules have been changed That's because he's not a working royal. He's still there. Um, and, and he's there alongside his his ex-wife and his daughter. Um, and of course, this is, a, you know, this is essentially um, a family occasion that saw members of royal families from around the world come together, including um, ex-spouses and so on. But I just think um, it's it's quite tricky terrain for the royal family to navigate when it comes to Prince Andrew just because he is such a controversial figure um, and you know you, you cannot sort of look at those pictures without thinking of the Epstein narrative, his fall from grace, Andrew no longer being a working royal and I think it's it's just incredibly distracting um, for negative reasons that the royal family could probably do without at the moment. Agreed no I, and we had the re-release of Epstein documents at the very beginning of the year. So just to reiterate what you said earlier, has not been a good year for the royal family so far. Can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, Prince William, the criticism he's received over the last week? I have been unbelievably surprised by some of the negativity and, and the backlash he's re received. Yes, well, we're talking obviously about Prince William calling for an end to the Israel-Hamas war. Um, he, he wrote a post on Instagram in which he said that the sheer scale of human suffering had brought home the need for peace um, in an enclave where too many have been killed. I can't believe that there are too many people that don't agree that he's speaking a huge amount of sense. Um, but this is such a divisive issue. Um, and he has, as you say, really been caught in the firing line. I mean, I suppose from a royal commentator's point of view, I would say that um, it's it's unusual for a member of the royal family to, to be to be commentating or, or posting on into Instagram or sort of reflecting on anything that might be seen to be a political situation. But I think, and I read William's statement very much being a humanitarian plea for peace rather than a political statement coming down on one side or the other. Um, and in fact, Queen Rania of Jordan today has also come out um, in, in a much more strongly worded statement um, saying that this this simply needs to stop. Um, reports have come out subsequently that the Foreign Office were aware of this statement before Prince William would have made it. I think that's probably something that we might expect and that the British government welcomed his intervention. Um, so, you know, it does perhaps cast judgment on, on how political a Prince of Wales, William, may plan on being. But if we look back to his father, his father also received criticism for being a political Prince of Wales. And I think as we look at our royals and the roles that they fulfill, um, you know, that never complain, never explain, being a bit of a bystander, watching on but perhaps not commenting, is perhaps just not what people want in this modern day where everyone has their say on Instagram. And, and you know, perhaps William's silence on such a matter could be cause for him to be um, criticised even more then he's been criticised by some for saying what I think most people would agree with. This fighting is awful. Too many innocent lives have been lost and there has to be a way to, to stop the killing, which is what he's saying. I, I completely agree. US um, wise, there has not been a negative reaction to Prince William's statement unless you disagree or unless you just your uh, you interpreted it a way that you felt like he was against your side it's been pretty positive i think that in america we do see him as a, a man with you know 
a very intelligent individual, a good leader. Um, as, as I'm sure you know, he polls stronger than our current president and our former president when it comes to leadership here in the state, which is wild because he is the Prince of Wales and is not a public figure here in the United States of America. Um, but I, when I read it, I really, what I focused on was needing to get aid to Gaza. It wasn't necessarily, uh, I didn't feel like he was saying there needs to be a ceasefire, exclamation point. I, I felt like what he was really saying is, is let's help the vulnerable. Yes, of course, we'd all like the war to end, but I really felt like the focus was, can we can we help the vulnerable today, right now? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I I wasn't turned off by the statement, but I did see the huge slew of of criticism and people saying he needed to know his place and um, talking about how he handpicked the trendy the, the trendy causes to get behind and and I completely disagree. So. I'm glad you your reaction was so positive as well. Uh, speaking of American politics, do you mind if I if I jump into some American politics now? No, let's talk all things Trump. Go for it, Kinsey. <laughs> Former President Donald Trump, of course, making headlines this week, uh, hinting that he could deport Prince Harry if he's reelected. He warned the Duke of Sussex that he will not protect him like President Joe Biden's administration has against the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation, as you know, currently asking for transparency in court, saying they'd like to know how uh, the Duke of Sussex, was, how he got into the United States, how he stays in the United States. Um, they'd like to know if he lied on his visa. Uh, they say that this is of interest to the American public, especially after Prince Harry said during his Good Morning America interview that, yeah, he's considered becoming a citizen of the United States. Um, I, I'd like to know, just from your standpoint, do you feel like this is just Trump talk? Just Trump, you know, he he's so good at making headlines. You know, he was a PR machine before he was president. I, I don't know if I necessarily believe that there's any weight to this story. What's your opinion there? Well, I think if this is top of his agenda before he's even in office, then that's frankly concerning in itself. But, you know, he's someone who we, you know, we, he's someone who bears a grudge, doesn't he? I mean, he doesn't let things go. And this sort of feels like quite a personal vendetta against the Sussexes. I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Kinsey, but he said in the past, hasn't he? He's not a fan of the Duchess of Sussex and um, is clearly not much of a fan of Prince Harry. He's accused him of, um, of letting the Queen down, that the late Queen betraying her trust. Um, letting the royal family down. So certainly the Sussexes aren't going to get any sympathy from Trump, but will they actually get a concerted campaign to expose what was on his visa paperwork? Um, well, I suppose we'll just have to wait and see. But I mean, as president, he has the right to overturn that visa application if he so wishes. But I think, well, I can't speak for most Americans, um, but I would have thought most people would expect him to have slightly higher priorities on his agenda. Do you not think? No, I, I agree with you. Yeah, there's a border crisis. We're not worried about the prince. The prince is fine. Just let him enjoy his Montecito mansion. Uh, you know, you're right, though, because it, it's interesting that he uses he uses the the betrayal of the queen as his um, reason for having issues with Prince Harry, because we know that uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were conveniently not available to the president when he former president when he met with Queen Elizabeth. We know that they they, I don't want to use the word endorsed, but they flirted with the idea of Joe Biden being president on the ABC Times 100 special when they were when they were kind of co-hosting um, that here in the States, they alluded to the fact that they would like a, a different president in the White House. And, and that was interpreted as an endorsement for Joe Biden at the time. Um, you know, Meghan Markle did a lot of um, video digital campaigning for voting, for voting in general with Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris, who was running for VP at the time, um, and former First Lady as well, Michelle Obama. So, you know, it does seem like the Sussex is lean on the Democrat side here in the States. Uh, and then remember when poor Prince Harry thought he was on the phone with Greta Thunberg and was talking negatively about Donald Trump. So there is clearly some animosity there. And I do think that if Trump ever did pursue the Sussexes, God bless the queen. I think that it is personal. I don't think it's to protect the queen's memory or her legacy. I, I think it's likely because he's unhappy over some of the, the statements that they've made in, in the past. 
Yes, I, 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 complete, I completely agree. And I suppose as, as um, outspoken Democrats who have nothing nice to say about Trump, they're not entirely um, alone, are they? Uh, many, many have said far worse than, than Meghan and Harry have said. Um, but, you know, I, I suspect that will sort of, you know, probably boost their own popularity amongst the Democrats. And, you know, it's, it's interesting we're talking about Meghan and Harry in politics because it wasn't so long ago where actually Meghan's own political career was being speculated upon and that perhaps one day she might run for office. I'm, I'm sure she probably thinks she could do a much better job than President Trump, and many might agree. I, I'm sure you're right. Um, well, uh, speaking of Meghan, we are seeing a lot more of her lately. A video of her has emerged cooking traditional food with a group of 15 women who resettled in the U.S. from Afghanistan. Uh, the Duchess created the Welcome Project in 2023 as part of her work with Archwell Foundation. This comes just days after she appeared in, a Lo in London via video link to open a new wing of an animal charity named in honor of her late friend. Katie, I think this is like four times we've seen her, at least in the last two weeks. That's um, a pretty significant jump from, yeah, I mean, we go months without saying them, if I'm honest. Do you think that this is a part of the, the famous rebrand? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are hearing the word rebrand every six months, but do you think that they are really ready to launch Meghan Markle and, and make her her own entity here in the States? Well, I don't think it'll be relaunching Meghan Markle. I think it'll be relaunching Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, because she's certainly going to use that title to her advantage. And I think when you reflect on last year, last year very much felt like Harry's year. I know they had the Netflix docuseries together, but so much of it was documented by Spare and Harry's narrative when, you know, Meghan actually was, was notable by her absence. So it sort of feels like this is perhaps her moment. This is the moment where she may be launching some sort of a lifestyle blog. She may be looking to set herself up as the next Martha Stewart. And um, she's finding her feet. We, you know, we've seen them as content producers for Netflix. We've seen her supporting Harriet Invictus. Um, and I think there's probably a sense that what are we going to see Meghan doing in her own right? So I think we can probably expect more of this to come in, in, in the coming weeks and months. And as for Prince Harry, will we be seeing more of him over here in the UK? Um, my sources are saying that he is planning on coming back. He wants to spend some time with his father. Let's not forget that he only got a very, very brief window of a meeting, just 30 minutes, having taken a transatlantic flight to come over and see his father after that shock cancer announcement. Will we be seeing more of Harry over here? I suspect we might be. Um, and possibly even seeing the Sussexes as a family coming over here at some point. But as for Meghan and her focus, that feels very much California at the moment. Whether Trump gets in or not, I think they're staying put. Yeah, no, I don't think they're worried about Donald Trump. I think that they probably roll their eyes when they see these types of headlines. Um, well, Katie, it's been so fun to, to talk to you. I, sadly, we that's all we've got time for. Uh, we're, I'm so excited for everybody that's watching this. If you agree with us, if you disagree with us, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Talk TV. And Katie and I will see you again next week. Thanks, Kinsey. Can't wait to see you next week.